of my career or knows anything about Congress. Even the New York Times editorial board noted over the weekend that while they certainly don't agree with all my views, they are principles going back decades. And the Times had to admit the Democrats are, quote, playing politics, end quote, by introducing legislation with, listen to this, no chance of passing the Senate that serves only to hardison, harden partisan divisions. That's the New York Times this weekend. So, Mr. President, my differences with Democrats on complicated matters of election law are the kind of disagreements we used to be able to have without mainstream media outlets screaming that one side is traitorous. This Congress, this entire country, only works when we refuse to let baseless smears displays real debate. Benjamin Franklin said we have this republic if we can keep it. And among other, th and among other things, keeping our republic means we can't let modern day McCarthyism win. So here's my commitment. No matter how much they lie, no matter how much they bully, I will not be intimidated. For decades, I abused my Senate seat to stand up to Russia and protect the United States of America. I'm proud of my record. I'm proud that it's right there in black and white, and liars cannot gaslight it away. In the 1980s, as a freshman senator, I proudly stood with President Reagan on missile defense and other aspects of his Soviet policy. While the liberal media was shrieking, shrieking, that Reagan-Bush foreign policy wouldn't work, I was honored to support it with my vote and then watch communism crumble. Then in the 1990s, I used my place on the state foreign ops subcommittee to sound the alarm when President Clinton was too soft on Russia. Here's the Wall Street Journal, December 1994. Kentucky Senator handed keys to foreign aid to be the most potent foe of Clinton's Russia policy. Here's what that article said. The real challenge to the administration's policy is McConnell's plan to attach, to attach stiff political conditions to that aid, threatening a cutoff unless Russia stops meddling in its neighbor's affairs. So let me say that again. As early as the 1990s, I was on record as laser focused on Russia's meddling beyond its borders and making sure the Russians were held accountable. And Mr. President, I ask consent this article would be placed in the record. With that objection. On the other end of the Clinton administration, I used hearings to grill Democratic officials who were soft on President Yeltsin and optimistic about President-elect Putin. I didn't share Democrats' faith that Putin would be our friend. I ask consent that two excerpts of my committee statement from April 4, 2000, calling for a tougher stance on Russia's foreign meddling and expressing skepticism about Vladimir Putin appear at this point. With that objection. Regardless of who is in the White House, regardless of which way the political winds were blowing, I have consistently treated Russia like the threat that it is. Even under a Republican administration, I spoke out when I was afraid the U.S. wasn't doing enough to stop the erosion of democracy and rule of law in Russia. A conference report that I co-authored in December 20. 03 stated, the managers remain gravely concerned with the deterioration and systematic dismantling of democracy and the rule of law in Russia. We push President Bush's administration, a Republican administration, to do more. And of course, I helped lead the charge against the Obama administration's completely feckless Russia policies. President Obama mocked his 2012 opponent for taking Russia too seriously. His administration sought a naive reset with the Kremlin. And for eight years, I helped lead the charge against that weakness. In 2010, I stood with John McCain and John Kyle to oppose the New START Treaty, a watered down placeholder for the sort of tough stance we knew was necessary. As Vladimir Putin was building up his missile arsenal, we even had to push President Obama to commit to deploying capable missile defenses to Europe. 
In 2012, I firmly supported sweeping legislation to authorize heavy sanctions following the killing of Sergei Magnitsky in a Russian prison. The Obama administration flinched and tried to tiptoe around our legislation to avoid messing up their charm offensive, but we backed them into a corner and the president signed the bill into law. In 2014, I and other Republicans constantly pressed President Obama to get tougher on Russia with respect to Putin's aggression in Ukraine. So, Mr. President, I ask consent that the news article dated March 4, 2014, entitled McConnell, Obama's Passive Foreign Policy is a Mistake, appear in the record. Without objection. And since 2017, I've continued reminding everyone that Putin is not our friend, that Russia is going to continue trying to meddle, that we need a comprehensive strategy to contest Russian aggression, that alliances like NATO are critical for standing up to our adversaries. So once more, for good measure, Mr. President, I ask consent that the news article dated August 15, 2018, entitled, U.S. Senate's Top Republican Likens Russia to Old Soviet Union, be included in the record. Without objection. So, Mr. President, I don't normally take the time to respond to critics in the media when they have no clue what they're talking about. But this modern-day McCarthyism is toxic and damaging because of the way it warps our entire public discourse. Facts matter. Details matter. History matters. And if our nation is losing its ability to debate public policy without screaming about treason, that really matters. In the middle of the 20th century, the original McCarthyism hurt America's strength and diminished our standing in the Cold War by dividing us against ourselves and letting lies, innuendo, and baseless accusations